Hey, it's Artifacts, and today we're gonna do a challenge. I've been challenged by a YouTuber Multiplier, and he asked me, would you like to do a challenge where we're gonna make a track, or a piece of a track, without actually having the sound turned on, so we're not gonna be able to listen to what we're doing. Now, I thought that was a pretty cool idea, so I said, yeah, sure, why not, let's do this. So, through the magic of video editing, I'm just gonna put a little, very little bit of what I've made in this video right now in the screen, so you can hear it. Right, so the challenge is to make sound without having your audio turned on. So I'm gonna set my volume to all the way down so we're not gonna be able to hear anything and the preview volume is also gonna be all the way down. So if you wanna see Multiply's version, click the link in the description below this video. This guy is also a YouTube tutorial creator and um, he makes able to live tutorials as well. Um, he's a great guy and uh, definitely check him out after you've watched my video. Now, to um, make things more easy for myself, I could go with something really simple to create, like um, maybe a hip-hop beat, or something like um, an electro house, or maybe just a simple house track. That would be pretty easy to create, because the rhythms are pretty simple. But, you know, I'm me, and I thought, let's make things a little bit more difficult, and let's challenge myself with this as well. I've been working a lot on drum and bass recently, and drum and bass is pretty much the genre I will be working on in the coming, well, weeks. So I thought, maybe it's a better choice to just do something with drum and bass. So let's go and try and make some drum and bass without being able to listen to it. Now drum and bass is already difficult to create when you are able to hear what you're doing, so let alone when you're not hearing anything at all. Let's get to it. Um, I guess we're gonna start making some drums. I'm gonna set my tempo to 174 beats per minute and let's just go and find some drum samples. Now, when you're doing a challenge like this, it's definitely a good choice to either go with drum samples that you've made yourself or go with drum samples that you know sound good. So if you have a couple of sample packs that you like, well, that you like a lot, definitely go for those kind of samples. Now I've been working with a pack recently and I really like the sounds in there. So I'm just gonna go in here and let's see. Um, right now it's gonna be a little bit more difficult because I'm not able to hear what I'm doing but I can actually look at the waveform right here um, of these kick drums so I'm just looking for one that has a nice solid bottom end um, and it has quite a nice decent tail as well I guess something like like that could work but it's still a little bit wonky looking I guess that one looks, well, reasonably better. Um, let's just go with that one. I'm not sure how it sounds. Um, I'm also going to put something on the master track so that we are going to be able to see the actual frequencies that are in the sounds that I put in this project. And that's, I guess, really diff uh, really important to do because well, you, you just want to see what's going on. So let's just put that there. Make it a little more narrow. And let's see. Yeah, let's do it like that. So we have a full a full range of frequencies from 20 hertz to 20k. Um so here we can now actually see the frequencies. So that's definitely gonna help because now we're gonna be able to see which frequencies are in these sounds. So the kick definitely has some good bottom end. Um, I'm gonna make it a bit shorter though because in drum and bass you just want everything to be nice and short. Just give it a little fade out. Um, next up we need a snare drum. Now I'm gonna stick with the same pack. Um, Well, that one looks good already. 
it's nice and snappy looking which is great and I guess we'll make it the same length as the kick and just make that a little shorter as well and let's just color code these channels real quick um, drums are always gonna be red with me you want your drums to be hitting the red right let's call that drums and we can call this one kick let's call that one snare um, let's create another audio track and on this one we want to have a hat so I'm gonna be looking for a hat that looks nice and short I guess that one looks pretty much nice and short yeah so from this one I can clearly see it's probably a closed hi-hat which is what I'm looking for so let's give that a little fade as well and I'm gonna make that a little bit quieter we can turn warping off for all these clips and the hats are gonna be a little bit quieter so I guess mine is 5 dB would be good and I'm just gonna create a really simple rhythm with this now the snare will be hitting on the fourth beat as well and I'm gonna think of a rhythm for the kick drum and the snare drum um, I guess we can repeat that let's see I'm thinking of something like, um, um, let's see, something like that, that could work, so that would be one here, one there, one there, and one there, and We're now getting something that sounds, or that looks at least reasonably good. Let's add a little bit of EQing to these. Let's call this one hat real quick. Um, I'm guessing I'm just gonna use Fab Filter Pro Q because it's pretty damn accurate. And I guess with a challenge like this, you want to have your things to be accurate. Um, so the kick drum looks good already, I guess we can take out a little mid and maybe add a little bit of high end, which will help to um, make it cut through the mix a little bit better. Then for the snare, we can high pass that to about roughly there, maybe boost it a little and give it some more high end so that it cuts through the mix as well. And then on the hi-hats, Let's just high pass that. Maybe boost those high mids a little. Then I can see we're clipping just a little right here. But what I'm going to do is on the group itself, I'm going to add a little compression. Nothing too crazy. Just to gel it all a little together. Um, I can turn soft clipping on and now I'm just gonna add a little bit of distortion well actually a clipping plugin which is Cashrock LLC K clip um, I use this a lot of my drums um, the thing is right now we're already peaking at 0 dB with the drums but when I turn guard on right here it's gonna make sure that we're not gonna exceed 0 dB and what that's gonna do is we can actually now boost the input gain that's before that ceiling level so I can probably boost this with about one and a half DB without getting any distortion or well without getting too much audible distortion so let's bring that soften up to about 20% and I guess the drums will be sounding quite good and loud now so let's add a drum break um, I'm gonna stick with the same pack because I know there are some good loops in there. I'm not completely sure which one I'm gonna take. Um, let's see, wave loops, drum loops, right? 
Probably gonna have to be looking for something interesting. Oh, that one looks good. It has no kicks in it by the looks of it. Or this, these are kicks, but I don't think they are. No, I think those are hats and these are snares. Um, let's just hope that this snare works well together with this snare. That they are roughly in the same key or that they just work together quite well. Um, I'm going to bring the volume down of this track a little bit. And I guess we can high pass that track as well. It doesn't really look like there's a kick drum in there. Let's just high pass that. Out there. Maybe boost the high frequencies just a little. Um, so I guess we can copy this now. Like that. And then right on this part. Let's see, we're gonna cut. I'm gonna cut this out. Oh, I'm gonna cut. See, I'm gonna cut that out. And then. Um, let's chop this out. Let's keep that hit right there. Maybe we're gonna keep that kick as well. And I guess I'll just take these out. Um, let's give them a little fade. We have a drum break, drum loop that sounds or that looks pretty good on the frequency anal analyzer. Um, there's pretty much only low end in the kick, which is good. Um, so this is probably a quite high end snare, which is, well, kind of what I was looking for. I wanted something like a clappy kind of snare, something really snappy, not something with the distinctive 200 hertz peak. Um, I guess we're going to add some bass now. I can delete these tracks, create a new MIDI track, and let's give it that blue color. Call this bass. And bass one. Um, let's add serum. We're gonna do some synthesis. Now, I'm not gonna go too crazy with the synthesis because I'm not able to hear what I'm doing. So I'm gonna keep things a little bit simple for myself, which is, um, I've made a couple of wavetable packs and um, a couple of serum preset packs, and I'm working on a new one, which is gonna be a neuro base pack, which is gonna be coming out soon. And um, I have one wavetable that I made for it that I like, well, actually it's two. It's the normal one and the squareified version. Um, which one should we choose? I guess we're gonna go with the neural one because we're doing drum and bass. I don't really want that terror squat sound. Now this wavetable, you can see it has a big tonal change. And the first, I would say from here up until, well about here I guess, sounds pretty awesome. Um, not that the ending part so doesn't sound awesome, um, this part sounds awesome as well, but not if you come from the left side, so... You know, I think I'm gonna add elevo number one to that, and I'm gonna bring that range down, because I don't wanna have that last part of the wavetable in there. Um, I guess around there should be good. Mm, now for the level, I'm also gonna add elevo number one to the level. Now, I'm also gonna do two voices, and let's bring the detuning down a bit. Um, I'm gonna add a sub directly to the output. And for elevo number one, now, I could go and sit, you know, 15 minutes creating a cool shape within the elevo, 
which is okay, but I'm, I want to save some time. I don't want to have you to sit through me just sitting here for 15 minutes creating shapes in this LFO. So I'm going to be using a shape that I've used in a track of mine recently. And I've used that. It's a couple of ones actually. I'm going to use the last one. I've used this at a rate of two bars in the track that, I, that I, um, I've worked on. But maybe if I just put it at one bar it would work and I'm not gonna turn trigger on so it's actually just gonna go through this patch um, I guess we'll have to see how fast that is let's just make some notes because otherwise we will not be able to see anything um, what key are we gonna do I guess the key of E would be good so let's just take E um, let's think Maybe something like this. Oh, something like that. And then on this last one, I'm gonna go up. So let's move on. I'm gonna copy this one over. So we're gonna have the same thing going on and then I think I'm just gonna change this last part um, Let's just go up here Go up like that and just delete that note. That would be cool. I guess That's our base um, Well, actually we still need to check if we are in the right key um, Let's see Okay, so our sub is somewhere around 300 and What is it? 327 Hertz. That's way too high. Um, I guess I'm gonna have to drop two octaves on this. Something like that. Yeah, that looks much better. 82 Hertz. Yeah, I guess that's better. Um, now I want to add, add one more layer to this. I'm going to use an audio track. Um, just call that bass fill. Now, I create a lot of samples every now and then when I just uh, when I'm not working on tracks and just doing sound design stuff. I create a lot of samples and I save those to a folder. So I've got a folder right here, complex modulations, and this is literally filled with longer samples that I made myself and I'm just gonna see I have a few of these ones which sound pretty awesome um, let's just take one of those I'm not sure which one they all sound different I'm just gonna take that one um, let's turn warping off and this is in the key of G so if I drop this down to semitones we're now in the key of F um, let's just create a really short clip and I'm gonna give that a little bit of a fade in and just a really short fade out so that we don't get any clicks going on and I'm just gonna zoom in and I'm gonna be looking for an interesting part to use I guess something like here could be interesting maybe this let's see Try another one. Um, let's see. I'm looking for some interesting kind of waves in the waveform, or at least something that looks interesting. There's something around here that looks like there's some stuff going on down there. Um, let's just do that. this one let's just do that part um, I'm gonna copy this one over one more time delete that not sure where that came from but and let's just change it up a little bit over here let's just do
that. So we have a slightly different one right here. And I can copy that over. I'm not even gonna bother too much because we can't hear it anyway. I can play them though in solo to see what's going on in the wave uh, in the, in the in the frequency analyzer. So that one has quite some high end, but a good bottom end as well. So that's good. That one starts off without any high end, or at least not much. So that's good. We might actually take. A little bit more of that. It looks nice. Might want to change that first one. It doesn't really look. There's, there's a lot of high end in that one. I guess that looks right. So just copy that over. I don't know where these are coming from, but. Let's just get rid of that. First I'll add a bit of compression to the bass track. Um, let's do that. This is gonna tame all those unwanted peaks that might be in this sound. And I'm just gonna bring this up until we're just starting to clip then I'm gonna turn soft clipping on and now I'm gonna add sidechain compression afterwards so drop that down sidechain coming from the kick and I'm gonna turn the EQ on with a high pass let's just drop that I want about 5 dB of gain reduction maybe a little bit more but not too much so it's just ducking it down slightly. That looks about right. Um, let's do that. Duplicate that. And now I'm going to choose the snare. Let's do a band pass because in the snare there might actually be quite some high end. So I'm just going to take well, something around here in the mid range. That looks about right. Drop that a little lower. So um, now we have this, which should kind of work right. Um, let's duplicate this, and now I want a faster hi hat going on during this second part. So I'm just gonna create another audio track and call this fast hats and. Let's see, I have another pack which I really like. Let's take a sample from there. Um, let's see. Looking for something with a faster Hyatt going on. I guess something like that. That one looks a little bit more defined. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. Not sure what it is, if it's hi-hats or percussion, but we're gonna use this. This is gonna be your faster part. I don't know what it is, I hope it's a these are hi-hats. Well, we could probably turn them into hi-hats anyway by high-passing it completely. <laughs> you know, just taking out all the low end, I guess that will work. Um, I guess these are high ads. They're already high pass, so just do that. Maybe add a little bit more high end to it and drop them in volume a bit, I guess. So just duplicate that. I can consolidate this, turn loop on, and just drag that out. This looks pretty right if you ask me um, let's just get rid of it in the end just do that um, so now we have 16 bars I guess I want to do some kind of a end part right here 
So let's see. So I guess we could do something down here. Mm. So I wanna get rid of that hat at the start. And I wanna get rid of these as well. Um, let's add a, another drum break here. Let's add an aiming break. Um, okay, this is difficult because I'm not able to see what's going on. Let's just drag it in and see if we can find some stuff. Hmm. That looks right. Turn this to beats for both of them. Bring that down a bit so that we get a little bit more of a snappy kind of rhythm. And I guess we want to high pass that as well. Um, I guess we're getting pretty, doing pretty good now. Let's consolidate this and I'm going to create a reversed kick leading into the drop. And I'm going to drop that in volume just a little bit. That's nice. So then I'm going to take that reversed kick and drop it at the end as well. So it's going to lead into the next section. Um, I think we could do another section down here which would be pretty cool is to just duplicate this entire part like so and since I'm using that base down here um, it might be cool to just duplicate that get rid of all this and let's change this, this patch ever so slightly. Um, wait, before I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna go into the patch itself. Um, I guess we can add a bunch of effects just to make it a bit more interesting, I guess. Let's do that. Um, uh, let's just add a notch filter. Um, One over two raid. Just adding some filtering to it. Um, let's take a double notch, by the way. Adding some filtering to this. This one, it's gonna do the same, but in opposite direction. I can give it some drive. Um, now I can probably. Turn this down, see what go what happens. Because the volume might have changed now, so... So we're still getting about 5 dB of gain reduction, which is good. That's what I want. Um, let's add a little bit of distortion. Bring that mix down. Now we got a bit more. Uh, I'm just gonna add a flanger with a high pass. Just drop that down a bit, drop the depth as well. Um, I think that's going to be it. Maybe just add the compressor. Just add a bit of compression. A bit more compression. I'm not going to go with the multiband mode, I guess. I'm going to keep it at the normal mode. Um, so we're getting about 5 dB of gain reduction, which is good. 
Um, let's bring up the volume until we're almost clipping. So that's good. Now I'm going to duplicate this track. And I can take these and drop them there. Oh, by the way, I want to take this one out. And now I'm going to change this patch up. And I'm just going to be using the 2-bar version as well. So I guess that will just add some variation to this part. Make it sound a little bit different maybe. Um, which is nice. I like that. Maybe set this one to trigger. That might be cool. So it just re-triggers. Makes it a slightly more consistent and the same kind of rhythm I guess. Um, let's see what else could we do. I think I want to add some kind of a pitch bendy bass down that part so I can call this two and we have that little gap right now so I think I'm just gonna add something there um, let's start with a Reese or something like that This is all going to be... Let's hope that this is going to work. I'm just going to drop this in here, which is a G. So I'm going to turn that into sampler. Um, drop that to a G2. And then right here at the end, I want to have... Um, let's see. And I'm gonna set this to 12 semitones and set turn this one off set the voices to one and in the pitch tab I'm gonna turn glide on uh, I want it to be relatively short so it glides up quite quickly um, and now I'm gonna go into the sample let's just bring this down a bit Now what I want to do is I want to find some part that, well, sounds interesting. I think I'm going to go with something like that. Has a nice steady pitch by the look of it. And let's see if I can see. So I'm gonna create an audio track. I'm gonna try if I can visualize for myself what's going on with this sound. If I record this, um, we don't get anything. Right. Really, so I have to freeze it. And then I can... Right, so that's good. Okay, I can work with that. Um. It looks interesting already. Um, I'm gonna make it a bit shorter though. I want to have a little bit of a shorter loop length. Unfreeze that. I can probably start this somewhere in here as well. Um, do a little bit of attack. Let's freeze this again. Let's see what we end up with now. We got a little bit of a faster movement now, which is definitely something I like. Um, by the looks of it, I can... Mi uh, pretty much this part, from here to from here, to here I want the um, pitch bend to be. So I think I can actually make the pitch bend a little bit longer. About 100 milliseconds. And I can start a little bit more early in the sample bring the attack up a little bit more as well freeze again that looks a little bit better now um, now I'm gonna have to try to um, match these up with this particular grid 
See if I can make that work. So if I extend this just a bit, let's do it about that. We should get closer to what I'm looking for. And we are almost there. I'm just going to make that a little bit longer. Freeze it. And see. That looks about right. Maybe a little bit longer. Just a tiny fraction about that. That looks good enough. Now I want to add a pitch bend to it. So I'm going to make that range. I guess we can go with 5. That might be cool. Let's see what happens when we do that. Um, I want the pitch bend to be to right around here. Let's make this clip a little longer so our pitch bend doesn't screw up. Because sometimes Ableton just screws it up when you're last dot is somewhere around there at the end of the clip it won't jump back to its default position and when you play your clip suddenly sounds in a totally different key just do it like that you know it will always work then we're gonna freeze that let's drop it in and just let's take a look so we can see that movement is slowing down and it's actually looking quite good and maybe if I do it at 12 we will get a slightly different version. Let's see how that looks. Looks cool. Um, another option would be 7. That might be a good one. I think I'm gonna go with this one. Pretty much ends nice. So we can just give that a little fade out um can turn that track off we're just gonna use the audio and what I like to do is add a glue compressor to this and I'm just gonna compress the shit out of this and I'm gonna look at I don't want to get too much distortion so just be sure that looks nice there's a lot of bottom end in it and let's take off that first part I'm just gonna do it like that um, because right here I, wa I want to do a vocal so now I can zoom out a bit and we can probably do the same one over here maybe do it with Let's just do it without. Let's just do that. Um, now, let's make an intro, I guess. Should we go crazy? I mean, we're already going crazy quite heavily. Um, <laughs> this could turn out really good or turn out completely shit, by the way. I, I have no clue. But should we do film strings? Film score strings, you know, like I do a lot in my intros? I guess we should, right? Let's do it. Let's make that green. Let's group that in a track called Instruments. And this is going to be Strings. I'm going to be using um, Spectrosonics Omnisphere for that. So now with Spectrosonics Omnisphere, this one has great patches. Um, I'm going to sort this on Rating. Because I have a few really good ones in here. Um, the top one is one of my favorite ones for film strings. So let's just use that one. So now I'm going to create a 16 bar clip. Or 32 bars actually. And let's see what key we should use. That looks right for the bass notes. So I'm going to keep things simple. And... Let's just do that. And then we're gonna do 
an octave higher above that. So let's do that. So we just double that up. Let's take that one. Do that. So we have some kind of a chord structure going on. It's just two chords, but it's nothing too crazy. And then uh, here I'm gonna add some higher notes. Let's see, I'm going up to a C. So let's go up to a C as well here. Let's go down to B. Then G is, that will create a minor chord. So we can do that. Drop down to E, F, or let's just extend this a little longer. And then here, I'm just gonna do something like this, I think. Um, I think that's gonna be the right length. We just have those, what is it? Two beats, two bars in front of the drop. Um, just a little pause and then a vocal and then we're gonna drop into that drop I think that's gonna be good that looks good um, we're clipping heavily though just bring that down that looks nice um, I'm gonna add a low pass filter to that So I want to filter this in um, till here, I think, no, till here we're just going to filter this. going to do that. Let's see how that looks. So we're having... Mm, that looks pretty good readily built up and then we're gonna go down again here let's drop down quite quickly on this one and then I'm gonna bring it up again here then I'm gonna add another auto filter to this I'm gonna do a high pass this time and then during this last part um, just gonna bring that up Well, let's take it out from this part. I guess we just can do some kind of a rising effect right here. That will be cool. Sounds right. Looks right at least. Um, I'm gonna do another layer. I think I'm gonna go even more crazy. Let's call this one Choir. Um, since in Omnisphere, there is another patch that I really, really like. And that's the patch of a Japanese children choir. Now. I don't know if you ever heard Omnisphere and ever used that, but um, if I just type in Japan. Mm, Japan, Japanese Children's Choir. So let's copy these notes and I'm gonna take out all of those bottom ones. So we just are left with the upper ones. And then here at the end, I'm just gonna do this. So we have that. Then I'm gonna do another auto filter right here. I'm gonna take this out so that we just have that. Make it a little quieter or a little bit lower in on the filter cutoff. Let's bring that up as well. Going up quite gradually like that. Then I'm gonna drop back down. Um, I think I'm gonna drop back down to about the same as where it started. Like that. Now, let's see. I'm going to take um, the hi-hat that we have in the main track. I'm gonna create... I'm gonna duplicate the track. Let's delete it right here and delete all these hats so now we have this hat on a separate track 
just gonna add a bit of reverb to that head not too much just a bit I'm gonna bring the level down a little bit further um, let's see something like that could be cool so we can just duplicate that and I'm gonna copy these kick drums as well I'm gonna place that right here let's take that first kick place it right here as well do that and then I'm gonna place this one right here so that looks about right now I want to have some sort of a light and a, a light kick and snare during the intro. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to duplicate these two tracks like that, and I can delete pretty much everything on these tracks except for the first kick and snare. Just paste that over here. Let's zoom in. So these are these are my other kick and snare. Uh, I'm gonna create a new audio track. I'm gonna call this intro intro drums mix. Turn that to in. Select these two tracks and I'm gonna set that to the intro drum mix. So now I actually have one track where both these are two these two are running through. Um, I'm gonna go in here and with warping turned off I'm gonna pitch these both up a full octave so that's gonna make them much shorter and that's actually what I want I'm gonna go into the fat filter and let's see for the kick um, we can high pass this so we get quite a lightish kick sound maybe low pass it a little bit as well do something like that. I'm gonna do the same for the snare. Just high pass that a little bit higher and low pass that as well. And now I'm just gonna create a really simple rhythm because this is just for the intro. I'm gonna do that. And let's take them out right here so that we have kind of like a fill at the end. Let's add this one here as well. Mm, 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 mm. Then on this track, I'm gonna do an auto filter, do a low pass filter, and just automate that up. That looks right. Um, I think I'm gonna freeze and flatten these. Let's just freeze them. Duplicate. Now I can flatten this one. Just so I can see what's going on. So yeah, this is really loud. That's probably what it should be. Turn that track off. Turn this clip off as well. And freeze. I'm gonna do the same for the other one. Duplicate the track. Turn this one off and 
delete turn the clip off and then for this one I'm just gonna freeze and flatten this as well which is probably also gonna be too loud I'm just gonna bring that down and bring this up I'm gonna add this to the reverb and I'm gonna add this to the reverb as well that's looking pretty good now let's see what else should we do we should add some effects um, let's create a new audio track and my effects I usually make them white I don't know why but I just like to do that call this effects and I'm gonna go into my own samples again that I've made myself let's see I have a few in here this one looks pretty good uh, I'm gonna use that as sort of like an impact at the start of the track give it a little fade out and I'm gonna add that to the reverb as well I'm also gonna add it to the um, delay so that we can extend this sound a little bit um, I'm gonna set this to 6 so it's just gonna take a little longer and maybe just add a little bit of EQing to this so we have no sub in both the reverb and the delay so that looks pretty good so now let's call this one impact and I'm gonna duplicate this track I'm gonna call this one impact high pass and I'm gonna drop this one here because remember I've placed that kick drum right here so I don't wanna have too much low end going on here so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna high pass this one that's gonna be a little lighter so then again I can drop this one here but because we also have a kick drum there what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do that and these can probably be a little bit quieter as well just like that um, let's see I also want to have something like a noise riser right here I think I have one in my own folder as well I have a few risers down here let's take the 8 bar riser take this one so we might want to do something with a reversed vocal hit um, Vengeance has a few I guess we can use this one um, create a new track call that ref vocal I'm gonna use this one right here um, do it like that send it to the reverb probably gonna make that a, a bit quieter as well and I'm gonna add it here and then I'm gonna do another one over here turn warping on let's just make that a little longer so do about that and I'm gonna set this to complex pro bring the formants down a bit and let's make that fade a little bit more like this could probably add some kind of a synth maybe let's use serum for that mm, let's just keep it at a saw give that some nice amount of voices
Add a filter to it. I'm just gonna try and make a quite short filter movement. So on that filter, all well about that I think. Bring that up. And I'm gonna add some reverb to this. Guess we can do it from here. Don't need that big of a clip. Let's do this. So now for the notes, let's do E, C, B, G. Let's make those a little bit longer. About that. Let's duplicate this. And extend this. And I'm gonna add an auto filter to this. Take it down. Um, then for these, let's do. Um, let's do a little bit of hyper, a little bit of dimension expander, some chorus. Let's use the low pass. Mix that in. Maybe a little flanging. Two bars. Well, I guess that's right. So that's our ARP. Now we should do a vocal. I have a few vocals myself. I made a pack that I hope is going to come out soon, but not completely sure. And let's take a vocal. I'm going to do this one. Let's drop that right there. Warping off. Probably drop it down in volume a little bit. Let's give it a little fade out. And I think we could add that vocal end as well. Let's do that kick drum and I'm gonna add the impact as well. that um, now I want to have another noise riser let's take this one maybe take a shorter one that one looks nice now let's take a long one and warp that Take this. Let's drop this. Up there. Yeah. And now I'm gonna do this. So that looks about right. 
then during this intro I want to put some thing on this again uh, I have that rack that I really like I'm gonna put that on this track as well which is the dr intro drum mix so that during the end of this I'm just gonna automate this up ever so slightly which is going to give us a little bit more reverb I guess it's going to sound pretty cool um, we might not have to do it that high just go to about here um, this one is the Amen break let's see we can take that vocal that refers to vocal that I had and I can let's create a new audio track let's put this down here let's zoom in um, I'm gonna make this one beat like that I'm just gonna put those at the start here so like that so that's gonna be good EQ this a little bit is there any low end a little bit just do that probably gonna do the same to this one just high pass that then the noise riser gonna do that as well so what else should we do we could maybe add one last thing which is sort of like a snare drum roll to the build up I guess um, let's do an audio track I'm gonna call that clap and I'm gonna have a clap that sounds relatively short let's just stick with the vengeance samples for now okay that one looks okay gonna create a 1 8 note pattern so let's just give that a nice fade out so that they're really short and I'm du gonna duplicate these like that duplicate again duplicate again duplicate again And then use even shorter ones down here on 16 notes add some high passing to this to that because we don't want anything any sub coming from this track and I'm gonna add a low pass to it I'm gonna automate that slightly so that we don't hear it at the start of the build up we don't hear it at all it just starts coming up I guess we can do some volume automation on it as well. Do this. Like that. Maybe drop this one down in volume a little bit. And now I'm gonna do a snare drum roll. So I'm gonna call this snare. And I guess I'm just gonna stick with the same folder. Let's just do this one. Let's take that one. Um, pitch this up 12 semitones, turn warping off. Um, these are going to be 116s. And let's make that short. Let's 
do that. Add an EQA to it. High pass. Add a low pass filter to it. Automate that low pass. And this one's gonna go all the way down. Just gonna do that. And I'm probably gonna do the volume as well. Like that. Um, add a high pass to this as well. So during this last part, the high pass will be brought up. That's looking good. I'll probably drop this down in volume as well. So that they're not that pronounced, they're just sitting there in the mix, slightly in the background. Um, I think we're almost done. To be quite honest. Let's add some more interesting drums to the start of the track. Um, I'm gonna put that in the effects group. Create a MIDI track and let's load up contact. I'm gonna go all out with this <laughs> video. Um, let's do contact and let's add some really big orchestral percussive kind of sounds you know these big film music drums um, I think it would be pretty cool to add those to this project um, it's gonna be difficult because we can't hear them but I think that's gonna be the last step and then that's gonna be pretty much it so we're gonna be have to listen to that afterwards so um, let's see I want action strikes Let's load that up, which might take a little while. So Action Strikes luckily tells us which notes to use. Um, C1, those are the notes that we should use. Um, let's try and create something real quick. So C1. Um, let's freeze that. See how it looks. Um, freezing when, when you can't hear shit. I mean, freezing is definitely helping a lot because you can see visually what the waveform is doing. And that's definitely going to help you out a lot. So, create a new audio track and let's put this here. That looks, well, that looks pretty right. So let's unfreeze that again. Do delete that. Let's see if the level is right. Looks pretty well. Yeah, it looks right. Um, I might want to add a little bit of filtering to this just during the first part. Nothing too much. Just a little bit of filtering. Like that. So now one final thing, I think we should add a little bit of mix into this. So I'm going to select all these groups and I'm going to drop them all to minus 12 dB. Um, then for the instruments, I'm going to keep them the same level. The effects can probably be a little bit quieter. 
synth is going to be about the same vocal is right as well um, so now I can go into the mixer tab and I can play a part of the drop go into the mixer tab and see what's going on so that looks right the drums are slightly louder than the bass which is good the effects stay well underneath it and the vocal comes up doesn't pop higher than the drums or anything like that so that's good um, let's do some mastering real quick okay guys there you have it um, I'm done I've frozen all the tracks let's get ready to play this I'm excited to hear what this sounds like um, I'm just gonna turn my volume really low otherwise my mic will pick it up um, yeah so I made this all without being able to listen to what I'm doing and we're gonna be playing this right now for the first time are you ready three two one be honest I think I've done a pretty damn good job wow I didn't expect it to turn out this good um, I haven't heard it on vo full volume yet but um, I have to say that even though I haven't been able to listen to what I'm doing it still turned out pretty well and that's quite nice um, yeah so um, let me know in the comments what you like of this track how do you think this turned out and if you want to take this challenge on as well that's a cool thing to do. Do this challenge and post your track in the comment below and I'll get back at you as soon as possible. Now, if you want to see Multiplier's version of this particular challenge, you can click the annotation that's somewhere in the screen or you can go to the description below this video where you will find a link to his video. Um, also check out his channel, he's a great guy, he makes Ableton Live tutorials and I have to say, I definitely watched a few of his tutorials. Um, he's known for, you know, his funny catchphrases and stuff like that. Um, something I'm not that good at, but I have to say, he's a good YouTuber, so definitely check him out, subscribe to him if you want. Now, if you want to see more of these kind of videos, or want to see more tutorial videos about Ableton Live, then let me know in the comments what you want, would like to see a video about, and also subscribe to this channel, because here you will find a whole bunch of Ableton Live tutorials every single week that will help you to make better music. Now, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you back soon. Peace.